Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Wrist From Off The Cuff. Today we have a real cool episode for you with a new premiere for the channel. This is the Beluga line, which is actually the halo arm of the well-known micro brand Manchester Watchworks. Now this was established in 2013. Uh, basically this particular premium line that they have, uh, these watches would all be either Swiss powered and either assembled in the US or assembled as Swiss made models. This particular model is of course, as you can see from the dial, Swiss made. Now, uh, basically uh, the Beluga brand is a really just a micro brand startup and they're building off of that entry level success uh, that they've reached with Manchester Watchworks to expand into a more upmarket territory. Now, uh, before we move on to the specifics of this particular watch, uh, just to talk about dive watches in general and some key common characteristics and design language you're gonna look for when shopping for a dive watch, you're gonna want something that's of course water resistant through some type of screw down crown, something tough, legible with a dive time bezel, and if on bracelet, a diver's extension is always nice. Now this particular model is actually called the Beluga Ascent. And this, uh, in this particular trim, it is the Ascent 60 minute timer. Now there is actually the original model of the Ascent, uh, which kind of recreated uh, the dive bezel uh, that actually, sh that you use while you ascend. Um, so it was a very niche uh, kind of execution. Uh, I thought the watch looked really, really great and then was definitely very impressive for the specs and the money, but I'm really happy to report now that they do have a more traditional uh, bezel insert in the 60 minute timer. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. Okay, now as you can see, truly a highly finished piece here. I mean, this uh, definitely is some of the more top tier micro brand uh, finishing that you're gonna find out there. Of course, there are gonna be micro brands that are out there that are really gonna exceed kind of what you'll find from a micro brand as far as fit and finish goes. I feel like this is right here on the cusp of that. So. Uh, definitely finishing you would kind of expect from a micro brand, but on the higher end spectrum, not blowing my, I mean, I'm not saying this is comparable to a Tudor or something like that. Um, but as far as an independent brand, I think, uh, the finishing really, uh, especially for a small startup, it's not going to get much better than this. Um, again, of course there are those anomalies in the kind of uh, independent watch world that are out there that are gonna have insane finishing for the money. But as far as something under a thousand dollars, I think it's really gonna be uh, tough. You'd be hard pressed to find something that's gonna have this level of attention to detail and fine finishing. Now, a little bit about this particular model. Of course, uh, the price is going to be $750, and that's direct from Manchester Watchworks. The case size is 41 millimeters. Uh, it's actually 42 across the bezel. Um, so this definitely wears like a full-size watch. It doesn't wear like a large watch. It doesn't wear like a mid-size or a small watch. It, to me, this wears really right there in that sweet spot. Um, and then considering that the bezel is about 42 millimeters, um, of course, it's going to give you a particular look and a feel and a fullness uh, to the watch itself when it is on wrist. Now, uh, the lug to lug is actually 50 millimeters, so it is, uh, you know, decently long, I guess you could say. I think anything above 50, you would some would consider large. Below 50 is, is kind of something that's gonna wear a little bit smaller. I feel like this one is going to wear pretty true to form uh, when you wear it as a uh, 41 millimeter diver. Now it is only 13 millimeters high, so the thickness is actually not very thick at all. As you can see, um, a lot of it does have to do with the fact that it does have, you know, the case back protrudes a bit, and then of course the bezel itself protrudes a little bit, but that mid case is actually quite slim and uh, very, very nicely done. I'm definitely, if you're a fan of the channel, you know that I'm a fan of that type of execution where Basically, the case is a bit more compartmentalized versus being some somewhat of a big side slab. So really a fan of that as far as the execution goes. 
Now the uh, crystal is of course a sapphire crystal with uh, inner AR coating and it is raised as you can see with a nice fine outer bevel there along the edge. So I think that they did really well with this AR coating as you can tell from the video you know, even under the hot studio lights, it doesn't really give off too many different hues of uh, blue or purple or anything like that. It's just really nicely executed. I say normally the best um, AR coating is, are the ones that you hardly know are there. So really, really nicely done from that standpoint. Now, the bezel here, as you can see, is actually 120 clicks. Really nice notchy action there. Super easy to grip even with these gloves on. Lines up just great there. Really, really, really nice grip. So the tactile feel there, if you're a big stickler for that, I think you'll definitely be pleased with the action that you're gonna find on this Beluga. Now, the crown is very simple. It is uh, signed, it does have that. Manchester Watchworks, uh, basically their logo there, as you can see, um, you know, nothing to write home about, but it is signed and well executed. Now the movement inside here, although you can't see because it doesn't have uh, a display case back is actually the automatic Swiss ETA 2824. So of course that's really nice, especially in the, at this price point for you to get a genuine ETA movement. And of course it definitely ties into the fact this is a Swiss made watch, as you can see on the dial there. Now the really nice thing about this particular ETA movement is that this one has been regulated to three positions, which is really nice. So the accuracy and the timing is really good. Now I'm not going to say that it's chronometer certified or anything like that, but normally in this price range you're going to be getting an unregulated movement, which is going to have a ton of variance in there. And I think it is nice for watchmakers to actually put a little bit of effort and do some in-house regulations uh, just to make sure that it's running a bit more more optimally so really really nice from that standpoint now as far as some of these details let's really dive in this thing is really the king of details when you look at it as you can see it has that really nice textured black dial and it does have printed indices but that dial right there some would call it a bond dial because it has that kind of uh, rifling uh, feature to it there with the spirals um, and then also of course you know that that kind of camera aperture uh, look there so really really cool looking and and very very unique you just don't really see that uh, very often and the attention to detail and the execution there is just gorgeous if I can get it a bit closer hopefully the camera is able to capture this without too much trouble there this thing is very, very finely executed and very well done. Now, um, of course, you're gonna see that polished minute and uh, hour hand, and then the second hand is painted white, which is very nice. And then as far as Loom goes, it actually uses a mixture of BGW9 and C3 Superluminova. So when you actually, when we get to the, um, the Loom shots, what you're gonna notice is that this particular watch is going to have kind of a dual uh, loom palette, which is really cool. So you're going to be able to see kind of uh, C3 using some spaces and then BGW9 using others. So it will be a mixture of both blue and green toned loom, which is really nice. Um, as far as water resistance goes, this is water resistant up to 500 meters. Uh, which is really, really great. As you can see, it has that built-in uh, automatic helium escape valve there on the side of the case, which I think is a very nice touch. And then, of course, I do like that they did balance the case here on this side with the opposite side there. Um, re really nice, uh, more symmetrical look to the case. And, and then, of course, uh, 
you know, is, is a bit of a mixture and a homage to uh, multiple different watches, I think, uh, in its case shape and execution. Uh, but when I really look at this watch, I, I kind of think of it as a modern mill sub, and that's because it does have the full indexes there, and then it also has that really great 24-hour scale on the Rehot. So I think that's really, really nice. Um, and it's, and then of course it does have it broken down the five minute increments and then you just have the, it's very, very legible. Um, and it just has kind of a tactical vibe to it. Of course, although it is quite reflective with that bezel and whatnot, um, it just has a really, really cool look to it that I, I definitely can appreciate as far as the visual aesthetic. It definitely looks like a tool watch. It means business, but of course, because of the finishing on it, it does make you think a bit more on the luxury side as well, which just makes it a little bit more versatile, which I can definitely appreciate. Now, as far as the bracelet goes, another, you know, big win for the Beluga. Really, really nice uh, three link style bracelet here, as you can see. Really well executed. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. It does have some really nice micro beveling there all along the edges of these links. And it does taper down very nicely from 20 millimeters down to 18 millimeters. And then the clasp is a, you know, very basic flip lock clasp there, nothing special again. And then it, it also does not have a uh, diver's extension, but you know what? I think with the slimness and then the fact that also it does have drilled lugs, um, you know, if you were gonna take it diving, you wouldn't necessarily need to or want to take it on this really, really nice bracelet, which is of course also connected together with screw pins, as you can see, really, really nice touch. Plus you do have these micro adjusts holes here in the clasp so you're going to be able to get this dialed in really really perfectly so let's go ahead and move on to some wrist shots all right now as you can see i think this wears just magnificently on my seven and a quarter inch wrist not too big not too small definitely is a full size sporty feel um, and then when you get it up close to the camera, it's gonna look larger. But because of the way that they did the dial with that kind of step look to it, it's actually a pretty small dial, um, and it, 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 which really helps. And then of course there is a bit of, uh, you know, there's not a lot of empty space, um, you know, in the black there, and the black is broken up by that ring that does have the great 24 hour scale there. So I just think it's a really nice use of space and it's giving you uh, information that is actually useful instead of a bunch of extra branding or uh, kind of being repetitive. I think it's really, really nice, uh, a nice touch and a great design feature of the watch. And as you can see, it just wears really, really nicely on wrist. So really big fan of this one. And you know what, I actually am going to go ahead and show it on a couple of other options as far as uh, apart from this really great bracelet, which you know I can't say enough about, but it is a pretty simple bracelet. Um, so I figured I would share a couple of options I think would be great to wear this with and we'll also get them on the wrist so you guys can get a nice close look. So. Let's go ahead and see some of those other options. Alrighty now, first we have the Hirsch Accent, which I think is just about the perfect uh, rubber dive strap for this particular watch. As you can see, it has the great accent pattern there, uh, which is probably where it gets the uh, name Hirsch Accent. And I think that that extra pattern texture really ties in well to the dial there, really finely executed, and of course a very, very nice piece from Hirsch. Um, it's actually one of my favorite dive straps. Uh, I only wish that it was offered in a couple more colors, but I think it really does suit this watch absolutely perfectly, as you can see here. Really, really nice, and then it's just super comfortable. So if you wanna wear this more, like as, uh, you know, as far as a sporting type manner, I think you're really gonna enjoy it on this Hearst strap. Let's go ahead and take another quick, close look here, kind of at the finishing and get everything there. So as you can see, 
really nice i think the way that the light plays with the dial similar here you'll see it playing with the pattern and then it is of course very very comfortable because it does have that kind of hollow pocket there for breathability so this is going to wear very very nicely and the nice thing about having it on this particular strap uh, is you can get a nice look at that case back let me give it a quick wipe for you okay so now you can get a closer look at the case back there. Pretty standard, but I do like, uh, I really do like the uh, execution there on the water. Really nicely done, kind of reminds me of uh, the Japanese kind of uh, style of waves there. You, you've seen very popularized on different types of tattoos. I think looks really great. And it does actually give you a nice view of the profile and the silhouette of the particular case when you're looking at it straight on, which is very, very nice. So enjoy a couple of looks there at that fine finishing. Look at that great bevel uh, and that transition from uh, highly polished to finely brushed. Really nice. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next strap. Option. Okay, now here we see it on this wonderful uh, spring made nylon strap. Uh, the spring made NATO is really, really cool, and I thought it would be a great choice for this particular model because it just, again, uh, it just offers something that really suits it. And, and of course, I do think that, of course, the nylon has the great texture to it, but just the finishing on the hardware. I really really like as well and I think the shape wise it really suits it and and again it gives it that nice military feel but it doesn't add any thickness because this is a single pass uh, nylon strap there so really really nice wears extremely well um, really cool design so make sure you keep an eye out because I will be doing a full review on the spring made nylon NATO straps. I think they really, really fit the bill here, especially if you're looking for something that's gonna look, you know, very tactical and functional and more tool oriented, which is really, really great. And they just fit nice because you can actually just dial, there's no hole there. You just dial it in kind of where you want it and where you want everything to lay on your wrist and what's most comfortable for you. And uh, you make it happen. So I really like that about here. And then, of course, again, I feel like this really ties in well to the whole theme there of that kind of modern mill sub aesthetic. Uh, really nice there. And trim, slim, and blacked out. Huge fan of this particular design. And then I'll actually... Uh, it's, it's not quite as simple when it comes to undoing the strap as you would be for uh, a regular NATO but as you can see really great look even um, off the wrist there and you can take a nice look at the actual hardware really nicely finished and then of course this actually as you look at the back there the, the tolerances are very tight on this case and that's a similar to of course a rolex a mariner um, and it's one of those things that it really helps with the bracelet fitment just being absolutely bang on but at the same time when it comes to kind of aftermarket straps you're just going to have um, a, a little less clearance to work with. So it's really nice to have something that is as thin as this. You can be able to slide it through. I Again, I don't think you'd want to be using some super thick premium NATO um, to run through here just because those, those thicker um, nylon weaves, it, it would have a tough time fitting through that tolerance. So this being very thin, but still feeling extremely premium, I think is very, very nice. So really just a gorgeous piece let's go ahead and get some loom okay, shots okay here we go back on bracelet so you can get a little bit of an idea when i get to that low light transition of the quality of finish but let's go ahead and hit the lights all right as you can see really really cool layout there you can see that the uh the minutes hand is actually glowing that really cool green color there with the hours hands and of course all of the indices on the dial glowing in blue while you have the nice bright outer uh, ring there of the um, 
timing bezel there that is going to be that really great green color of course synonymous with c3 so you're gonna have a really nice combination there of loom you can see that seconds hand just pounding away and let's go ahead and get some low light transition for you so you can get kind of an idea of what this watch looks like and not the most optimal lighting situations because my studio lights do a great job of imitating full on <laughs> bright daylight um, but when you're going to be going into a building or of course you know into your vehicle or something you are going to be transitioning and you're going to and one of the nice things about this lower lighting is it's not going to wash out a lot of those imperfections in the finishing and brushing that you see so you do get a nice look there if you look at the beveling and the brushing and the uniformity really really nicely done and of course this does give you a really great angle on those fine details in the dial so really nice there can kind of play a bit with the light on the dial this piece really um knocked my socks off i'm not gonna lie to you guys um i'm really impressed by it um, on the wrist, you know, it has that chunky and substantial feeling while still maintaining a certain level of refinement. You know, there's some thought in this design. It's definitely not just a simple sub, um, you know, homage. It's definitely more than that to me. I think it does do so much like this Submariner and it does it so well that, of course, you're going to want to draw comparisons. But in reality, these uh, watches couldn't be, you know, I guess they could be more different, but um, I, I, in no way do I consider this a sub homage. Now, as far as model variants go, um, you are going to have the option between the Ascent bezel or the 60 minute timer bezel, as you see here. I'm a big fan of the 60 minute timer just because I don't actually go diving very often. So uh, the 60 minute timer is something that visually and functionally is just going to be something that I have more likely of a chance of using. Now some comparable models, I would say this really falls right between the two titans of the segment being this Christopher Ward C60 Trident and the Steinhardt Ocean One line and it really falls right in between those two um, in a lot of different ways. Um, I would say even in between in the way that it's designed. Now it's going to be slightly uh, less original than let's say the C60 um, from Christopher Ward which I think has really taken on kind of its a, a very unique look that's really made it its own watch um, and then the Steinhardt's going to be a lot more derivative. This is somewhere in the middle. It does take certain elements and I think it does have uh, a shape and a tone and just a theme that uh, we've seen before and, and it, this really um, harkens back to just those really cool kind of military submariners except it has a really modern look. Um, so you know, kudos to uh, Manchester Watchworks and the Beluga brand on actually bringing something that I think um, it, it's kind of doing something that Rolex isn't doing very well right now because Rolex doesn't have a mill sub. Um, so I think this could really, to me, especially, you know, you guys saw it on kind of its other strap options. Uh, of course, those were strap options that I provided. Those, those didn't come with the watch. Um, I think that it really just offers a lot of bang per buck and is very, very versatile. So I'm a really big fan. I'd say the bottom line is it is definitely a bit of a modern mill sub without really being a Submariner homage. Um, and it has extremely great specs for under 800 bucks. It's also Swiss made and it has a more original American design. So I think that's really cool and I'm really excited to see what this brand will do next. I see already they've posted tons of teasers for some more lines in their Beluga kind of um, product line. So I'm looking forward to those releases. They all do look very, very nice. So uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you guys like the video, please hit like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys. <laughs>